Hello guys, I'm Sergi and this is my wife Olga and welcome to the first session. First I would like to say that uh, we're no marriage experts by any stretch of imagination. We've only been married for nine years. Um, but what we've learned is that we need to invest into marriage for it to be good. One of the best ways that we can invest in our marriage is by learning about it. By reading books, going to conferences, groups about marriage just like this one. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing, learning right alongside of you. Marriage expectations. We all have them, whether we like it or not. But we came into marriage expecting something good out of it. Since in our culture we don't have that many arranged marriages, uh, we made the decision to get married because we expected really good things from it. And those expectations are based on a lot of things. And the main thing that influences our expectations is the family that we grew up in and we were born into. We watched our parents, the relationship between our, our siblings, and we, if it was a great family, we wanted to implement a lot of those things in our own family. Or if it was not so great, we want to avoid those things in the family that we are building ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're also influenced a lot by media. I mean, we are immersed in media. So that influences us too, as well as the couples that we watch, the families that we watch around us. And also, we are influenced by the relationship that we had as we were dating. So we got to know each other a, a little bit when we were dating. So part of that influenced the expectation that we had about our marriage. Hi, Didi. Hello. Hi. How are you doing today? Did you miss me? You did? You did. We build a picture in our mind of what we want and how we want our marriage to be. We have expectations of how we're going to spend our free time of, okay, my wife is going to be doing those things and I'm going to be doing these and then this is how we're going to spend our weekends, um, when are we going to start having kids and, and how we're going to raise them, uh, how, how much money we're going to have and how we're going to spend that money. So we have uh, we've built that picture of once from our marriage. It's kind of like when we go to see a movie and first we watch the trailer 
and we sort of think, oh, this is a good movie. You're interested in it because, you know, you, you saw the trailer, you saw a little snippet, and it looked promising. So we go to the movie theater, we're excited, or maybe you read the book, it's based on a book. So you have this expectation of what that movie is going to be about. And we go to the movie, and sometimes it's not what you expected, not in a good way. And you leave the theater and you feel so disappointed, and you just want your money back. When we first fall in love, we get married, we're in that honeymoon stage, those romantic feelings and thoughts, they make us act a certain way on our best behavior. Just because it's so easy and it's natural for us to respond in a nice way to the person that is nice to us. And those romantic thoughts and feelings make us nicer. We're more empathetic, we're kind, we're understanding. And Jesus says in Luke 6, 6, 32, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Responding positively to those great emotions is natural, but it's also common for those romantic starry-eyed illusions to fade somewhat over time. Mm -hmm. So in our mind, we build a picture that this person is going to be a certain way and uh, okay, she she's hot. She is a really good cook. Um, she's funny. I mean, we have fun together, and um, all those things are. Um, it, it kind of proves that we we'll get married for selfish reasons. But what is she gonna do for our marriage or for me? When we look at other couples and other marriages, it seems like they have it all together. They seem so happy together. It's always been true that the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, but now it's even more amplified when we have social media and we can show things that we want people to see. Sometimes it's hard for us to remember that what we see in the lives of our friends and acquaintances and what we see in their social media is what they allow us to see. A big part of it is edited. So I have a cooking website and I know that it's important for me to have really good pictures on my website because if it doesn't look good, you're not going to make the recipe. And what you see in those pictures on my website is this beautiful, delicious dish of whatever I made. And I worked really hard to create the perfect picture, the great lighting, composition, props. And then, of course, I edited the picture too. But what you don't see is what's in the background. This is the end of blogging three different recipes and what the kitchen looks like. So, Sergi's taking pictures over there. Well, we're just done. This is what it looks like. <laughs> Those are some yummy pryaniki. And then we have a really yummy cake right here and some other stuff <laughs> and this is another creation right here actually tastes really good it's chicken meatloaf it's stuffed with a cheese and mushroom um, stuffing and bacon on top so here we are how do we manage our expectations and still have a good marriage well, number one, we talk about our expectations. Yeah, don't expect the other person to read your mind. Very true. So what are good things to talk about? Talk about the roles you and your wife will play in marriage. For example, let's say in your family, mom took care of the bills. In my family, my dad did that. So coming into marriage, we have these expectations that I'm probably going to be doing this. and Or they, she's thinking, oh, this is kind of my role. So talk about it and figure out what works best for your family who's more organized who's better at it and decide so you don't have um, this unknown uh, thinking going on or how oh, I was gonna be doing this or a lot of unpaid bills whoops correct or mess in your finances not good um, let's say holidays where are you gonna spend there spend your holidays yeah and it's a good thing to talk to your family and your in-laws so, you know, there's not hurt feelings and instead of ha being happy and joyful around the holidays, you're all stressed. Mm -hmm. 
Talk about how you're going to spend your free time. What your romantic life life is going to look like. Um, Dates. Date nights. Uh, there's so many things. It's so much better just to talk. And if, if it bothers you, that means you need to talk about it. Yeah, I remember when we first got married and Sergi was supposed to come home at a certain time or he came home at a certain time usually. And he didn't come home. And it's been like two hours and I am absolutely going crazy with worry. And I'm trying to call him. I can't reach him. I was so stressed out. So after that, I talked to him and I asked him, can you please call me if you're running late from somewhere? I don't care if he's hanging out with his friends and he stays later than expected. As long as he calls me and says, hey, I'm running late, then I'm not worried and stressed out about nothing. So knowing how it affects Olga, I know that it's very important for me to make that phone call. And it's easy. Just make a call. Just by communicating about all of these things and any other things that come up in your marriage, you're just going to have a better relationship and you're going to avoid so much conflict and misunderstandings. Number two, realize happiness is a choice and your own responsibility. I like what Dennis Prager says about happiness. He says that the happiest people are the ones you don't know. Let's say you're having them uh, a fight. Those happen. It's a heated conversation. You're debating about something. It's not. It's not going that well. Somebody calls you at that time. So you choose to pick up the phone and you, and you you make a quick switch. How you doing? How you been? You have. You chose to speak differently to that person than to your wife or your yeah. husband. And you're all talking to them, having a nice tone of voice, and then hang up the yeah. phone, and you're like, okay, where were we? <laughs> That's back, get back to the conversation. So in that moment, realize you can always switch the conversation and say, hey, why are we doing this? We don't have to be talking to each other in that way. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 10, it says, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Attitude is such a big deal, and it makes a big difference in the way our marriage is going to go. And like Sergi said, happiness is a choice, and it's my responsibility to be happy. And it's not Sergi's responsibility to make me happy. And he can't do that. Nobody can make you happy, and your marriage is not going to make you happy and satisfied. It's up to me to be happy and to choose to react to certain things a certain way. Mm -hmm. But I promise to make you happy. <laughs> There's a book out there that's called Treat Me Like a Customer. It's pretty much a concept of when you're at work and you're dealing with customers, you, you put your best self forward. When you come home, you're a different person. You allow yourself to relax and your family, your wife, your kids get not the best of you, but a kind of a different version of you. Yeah, and there is a time to vent and a time for the other person to be understanding. But if that's all the time and they only see little snippets of our best behavior, then there's something not right about that. Yeah, and they get jealous that, they're, that your customers are treated better than them. <laughs> our family members, they see us in a way that nobody else does. They see us so much more intimately the way we really are as a person, the way we are at home, not when we're put, putting on a front for other people. And we want our family members to respect us and love us because they're like, yeah, my mom is like this at home. She's or not that my kids are like, yeah, you should see the way she is at home. Um, we, want, we want our families to get the best of us. That's correct. Number three, and the final one is, love does not seek its own. And that's taken from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, where all the attributes are, are love listed. And one of them is that love doesn't seek its own. And then there's also another place in the Bible. In Philippians chapter 2 verse 4, it says, Each of you should look not only to your interests, but also to the interests of others. Marriage is not a 50-50 proposition. 
it's a 100-100 proposition where each person in marriage does everything to make that marriage the best possible. And there are going to be times in marriage where you're going to have to be 150 if there's such thing. But uh, it, if your wife is not feeling good or husband is going through some things um, in life uh, and you have to be more than you expected it to be, I guess that's time for that. And that's where you do. Yeah, and then there's going to be a time when your spouse steps in when you're going through a rough time. How amazing is it when each of us comes into marriage with the mindset of, I'm all in. And when I wake up in the morning and I think, what can I do today to show Sergi that I love him? How can I make things easier for him? Maybe he's really busy at work. What can I do to alleviate some of the stress from him? And he's doing the same from his side. Then that makes it such a beautiful relationship when we're not just thinking of what is he going to do for me, but what can I do for him? There's a book called The Art of Loving, and Eric from the author says, To love somebody is not just a strong feeling. It's a decision. It's a judgment. It is a promise. If love were just a feeling, there would be no basis for the promise to love each other forever. So what kind of expectations should we have from our marriage? When we set our vows, for better or for worse, we know that our marriage is a commitment for life. We're not going anywhere. We're in it together forever. 